Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is tip 744, which is part two of a two-part video series regarding the Procunior tapping head. Be sure and go back and watch part one, which is number 743, if you have not already seen it, so that you get the continuity here of what I'm doing. Now, I have an awful lot of videos in the can as of October 2021 so make sure that you keep watching and do a search for Tubal Cane because most of you are not getting the notification which I no longer give out that is I should say YouTube doesn't seem to send them out so let's get started on part two I think you will find this fascinating and it is a YouTube first you know so what these two videos are all about is how the Procunior tapping head or tapping attachment will help you to tap rapidly on any drill press and I have several videos on that and I'll show you the uh, links in the description so check them out if you haven't already seen them but this particular video I'm also showing two things in part one I showed how to make a cutaway and in this part I'm taking the cutaway and I'm going to attempt to show you how it actually works or functions. So I did several things since the last video, improvements if you will. Number one, I made this lug just out of scrap aluminum here so that I had some convenient way to turn this with my hand. I'm not going to be able to use this one on the drill press because it does not have the right type of shank. I told you that they're available in a straight shank or a Morse taper shank. But what I did also since the last video is I cut this out a little bit more. So you can see more on the top side. It used to look like window one. This is window two for your viewing pleasure. Also I cut out quite a bit more down here since the last video and now in fact you can pretty well see the planetary gears can't you you couldn't at all if you go back and refer to the other one so I hope that's a little bit of an improvement for you and I did something else as well now window one really is a waste of time I could have done without it I thought it would help and I left this pillar in like they do in coal mining so that's window two and that's really the one I'm going to use. This will never again be used of course but I wanted to paint some of the parts not all of them but uh, two particular parts here so I went into my lady's boudoir and got some fingernail polish. Now that looks pretty cruddy <laughs> but it dries fast and I didn't have to leave the sanctity of my house to get it. However she had some yellow and blue, but they were almost transparent, worthless. So I had to go next door to Sophia's house, and she had a whole purse full. You know, she's 19 years old. whole purse full of uh, <laughs> polish. So, boy, that looks, it looks terrible, but it'll serve the poipus. I'm going to proceed to take this one apart simply so I will have some of those parts duplicated and in my hand when I compare them to the cutaway. Tell your friends if you like this video or if they like this type of mechanical uh, videos. There is no electronics involved. Everything is visual and understandable, I hope. Now these cost $700 in this size, so do not do this to yours. They make them in many sizes. It would be nice if nicer if I would have had the larger size. I think it would have been easier to deal with. Well, I have removed the fastener so I can take this apart real quickly. Pull this out, and this is called the drive shell, and they marked it at the factory. You see that? There's the ring gear, part of the planetary system. You know, there's all kinds of bearings in this, and I'm not going to even talk about them. But this is the drive shaft, a drive shell. Remember, the shaft does not go all the way through. It's like a half shaft here and a half shaft down here, much like that Ford transmission that I cut apart and you may have watched. Now, on this half, we have the clutch. So that's a double cone cork-faced. 
This is the side that goes up. That's the side that goes down. And there's a spring in there, right here, that kind of separates the two. So that it idles or remains more or less in neutral when you're not using it. That's the purpose of that. But if I take out this part here, you can see a bearing on the bottom. And this is the pinion gear which has half as many teeth as the ring gear which gives us a two to one speed up for reverse. Am I telling you too much? And this, see if they have marked that, oh yeah they marked that also at the factory as the reverse shell. Now these reverse and double the speed so that we can back out and have maximum pro productivity and uh, if we did not want to back it out, we wouldn't even need this part. Of course, we'd need uh, a bearing here and a way to support the shaft. So here's the other, I'm going to call it a half shaft. That's not the correct name. But on the end of it is the chuck. And the collet is missing. The collet's over here. Collets cost probably 50 bucks a piece. I only own one of them in a number 10 size, the maximum Tap size for the number one is one fourth, but in aluminum, not steel, number ten or three sixteenths is the maximum in steel, and that's what I have over here already installed. And looking inside of the main housing here, we have the three planetary gears and a bushing down in there, and you can also see it from this side. And remember, that's the weep hole for oil so oil we do not want oil to get on that cork clutch so all of the oil when you oil it here and this little oiler is deflected and comes along the drive shell and falls into the bottom and there is a I don't know where I put it a felt uh, device that absorbs the oil and the excess will go out the weep hole all right those are the basic parts you are extremely privileged to see this because no one else in the world has done this, including Procunior. And there's your parts list for easy identification. Now remember, the red is the drive shell, the yellow is the reverse shell, and that is the clutch, the cork clutch that I'm touching right now, and it is pinned to that shaft, as you can see and the planetaries in the bottom for speeding up and reversing. I've said that about ten times. Okay, and here's how it works. Right now we are in the neutral position. Notice that the spindle down here, the, the chuck, is not turning even though the drill press spindle is turning the drive shell. Okay, when we're ready to tap now, we would press the tap into the work, and as we do that, it is pushing the clutch up into the drive shell, and notice that the shaft down in my fingers here is turning in a one-to-one -one ratio clockwise. Now that you have tapped down to the desired depth or the bottom of the hole, as you back out with your uh, hand lever on the drill press, the tap tends to pull this way, and we're pulling the clutch down into the reverse shell. Now I'm still turning clockwise up here at the top, but notice that now the yellow part is, and the chuck down there by my thumb is turning in reverse. And since we are using the yellow reverse shell now rather than the red part, we are turning not only backwards, that is reverse, but we're turning at twice the speed because of the planetary system. Again, I'm reversing it right now. Look at the planetaries. Is that clear as mud? 
So in review, as we are tapping and engaging the tap into the work, we are pushing the clutch into this taper. And it's a very soft feel to that and a great deal of sensitivity. And then when we are reversing, we're backing this out just a little bit. And as we back it out, it is going and engaging into the reverse shell. Well, that concludes this video. Be sure and watch part one if you haven't seen it. Did I explain this well? That is, did you understand how these things really work? And perhaps now that you see all the parts and the bearings and so on in there, you realize why these cost $700 for this size, maybe even more. But you can pick up a used one a little bit cheaper. They really are meant for production and aren't worthwhile setting up in your drill press for just one or two holes. But I first used one of these in approximately 1966 and was amazed and always wondered how they worked because we didn't get a chance to, to discuss that at that time because I had a hundred thousand holes to tap that day. Leave a comment if you liked this and let me know if it was bad or your input as to what you might think or have you used one of these? This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and see you next time. Be sure and watch many, many of my other videos. This is extra credit. As I age I am becoming more and more forgetful and incompetent. Did this video mean anything? That is, did I explain it well or is it just an old shop teacher rambling about something he knows nothing about? I have three other videos regarding tapping heads. You may wish to watch them. Here are the titles.